is Ashkar. I work at Verizon Media Group, formerly known as Yahoo. I'm a tech lead at the uh, Scalable System team, which is part of uh, Yahoo Research Organization. And today I'm going to uh, present a two-year uh, project that landed itself into a contribution to Apache HBase, changing some of its core components, and also as a VLDB paper that was published uh, last year. This is a joint work with my colleagues at uh, Yahoo Research, Anastasia, Eddie, Gali, and uh, Professor Edith Kedar from the Technion. So as many of you know, uh, persistent key value stores are, have become really popular in recent years. This is just a sample of some of the uh, major technologies that are out there, Cassandra, HBase, MongoDB, CeloDB, and of course, state-of-the-art RocksDB. And there are many companies that use this technology for a large variety of uh, applications, such as real-time analytics, uh, product search and recommendation, uh, uh, fraud detection, e-commerce transaction, and maybe more common uh, at Facebook, uh, graph storage and uh, messaging. Now, all these technologies have a similar goal uh, they, they pursue. So as the name suggests, they want to have a scalable, reliable, persistent storage, but at the same time provide performance guarantee that are equivalent to serving data from memory, like an in-memory database. The leading approach to achieve this goal has been uh, log structure merge key value stores, which essentially transforms random I.O. into sequential I.O. So this was incepted originally for HDD, but actually this is a good idea also today for SSDs. Now, I'm sure many of the people in the audience are familiar with uh, LSM uh, stores, but I'm just going to go briefly uh, over the key concept so to guarantee that we are all at this, on the same page. So an LSM store organizes data in a series of uh, components of increasing size. Uh, the first component is an in-memory sorted map that absorbs uh, the most, or stores the most recent uh, data, and the rest of the uh, component reside on disk. A core feature of uh, LSM stores are that uh, write operation, that the memory uh, component absorb all write operation, and, uh, uh, and when, when it is filled, it is flushed to, to disk. Read operation, however, need to access all components. Therefore, another uh, uh, important uh, uh, feature of LSMs are compactions, which make sure that they take the content of a single uh, of each uh, component and incorporate it into the next level. And this is something that usually happens at the background. So between having write operation, mainly write to the memory, and having the compaction reduce the number of components, and obviously so that read, uh, uh, read latency is improved, and having a very efficient uh, cache layer, it's obvious that LSM is a better uh, solution than its predecessor like as uh, B plus trees. However, LSM stores still have uh, shortcomings. So, uh, these are uh, uh, the main uh, three challenges of uh, LSM stores, and I'm sure that people that have worked with uh, uh, such technologies are well aware of at least the first uh, two ones. So frequent uh, compactions, uh, they put a lot of pressure on the resources of the system, and therefore uh, usually reduce the throughput, the right throughput, especially in write intensive workloads. The second challenge is actually a trade-off. If you, between having multiple, column, multiple components uh, on disk, which means high space amplification, versus having more frequent compaction that reduces the number of, uh, of components but increases write amplification, right? Because you're writing the same value over and over uh, again. So this can also be described as a trade-off between write throughput and read latency. The third uh, challenge is uh, usually not at the spotlight. 
uh, fragmented uh, memory uh, layout uh, incurs high memory footprint, high uh, GC overhead, and in general is not uh, cache friendly and doesn't allow to uh, store data off heap. So I will go come back to this uh, ch challenge in, uh, in a few slides. So what is accordion? Uh, uh, in the rest of the talk, I will, uh, I will explain what is accordion, uh, how does it work, and I will present some uh, benchmark, benchmark results to uh, demonstrate that how it helps us to overcome these challenges that I just mentioned. So, but before we go into the uh, details, this is like the bottom line of accordion that, uh, that I would like you to, to remember from, from this talk. So Accordion is a novel write path algorithm for uh, LSM key value stores. We actually tackled the third challenge, the fragmented memory layout, and this uh, actually allowed us also to reduce the effect of the first two challenges that are more known. So Accordion introduces a flat memory representation that allows to reduce the memory footprint and the GC overhead, and thus making it uh, also uh, cache friendly. Uh, a special variant of uh, accordion uh, further eliminates uh, object uh, totally and thus making it uh, off, -heat, off heap amenable. Uh, by reducing the memory footprint, we actually uh, reduce the number of times that data needs to be flushed to disk and so we have less compaction and by this we increase the write throughput, decrease the write amplification and the D square. Okay, so this is the bottom line. Now as I mentioned, uh, we implemented our approach in uh, HBase. So this is how uh, uh, LSM store looks in HBase and every component here can be mapped into every other technology, LSM technology, like uh, LevelDB or RocksDB. So for example, H files are like SST files, and the active segments and seg snapshot segments are like memsters, right? So uh, the way HBase work is that uh, put operation are add a new uh, item or a new uh, version to an existing item in the uh, uh, active segment. And uh, once it is filled, uh, it is, when, when the active segment exceeds a certain threshold, it is flushed to disk. So the active uh, segment becomes immutable, and a new active segment uh, becomes available to serve new uh, updates. So as I mentioned, there are versions in the system. So if an item has a single version, we, call, we, we say that it is unique, whereas if it has a multiple version, we say that it is duplicated, okay? So, uh, as I mentioned, read operation have to need to access all live components in order to find uh, the key that they're uh, looking for. Uh, to reduce the, the number of components, we have background uh, compaction, which take several uh, H files and merge sort of them into a, single, uh, uh, into a single H file. And in the process, they are also they are eliminating a redundant uh, version and also removing uh, bloom, uh, uh, sorry, uh, uh, tombstones which mark deleted uh, items. Okay, so let's go back to the uh, uh, third challenge that I mentioned, fragmented memory layer, layout. So most uh, uh, LSM stores, uh, the, the, the index of the, of the active segment is usually a, a, a skip list, right? Because uh, we want to, to support dynamic uh, additions of, uh, of items. But uh, as you look at it, uh, skip list, the, the state of the art, every state of the art uh, concurrent skip list is uh, the layout, its layout is very uh, fragmented. And on top of it, on top of the index, we have a, a key value uh, object layer that uh, usually points to uh, variable size keys and values that may or may not be allocated in a contiguous, on contiguous buffers, okay? So we would like a way 
to be able to flatten the index into some uh, uh, immutable representation uh, such as uh, an array. So obviously this not only removes the higher level of the, uh, of the skip list, but also has a non-fragmented representation of the lower level of the skip list. And obviously we get a, a much leaner footprint of, uh, of the memory, especially if we consider cases where the keys and the values are very small. Okay, so I will come back to uh, the key value object layer uh, in, a few, in a few slides. So obviously, um, having an array representation is much better in terms of uh, memory footprint, but obviously we need the skip list in order to support dynamic, uh, dynamic uh, updates uh, to be added to the LSM stores. So uh, how, do, how are we able to support this uh, flattening? Accordion uh, uh, actually reapplies the design of an LSM in memory. So we added a pipeline between the active segment and the snapshot segment. And now uh, updates uh, add items in, uh, into an active segment that uses just a very uh, small fraction of the memory. And when it is filled, it is flushed into the pipeline instead of to the disk. And we're, uh, in this way, we're, we are able to, to have uh, 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 all, all pipeline segments are actually uh, flat and imputable and have a much uh, smaller uh, memory footprint. So let's go back to uh, discuss the key value object. We have, uh, a separate uh, variation of flat segment that also uh, totally eliminates the need of key value stores. And when we consider the case where key values are allocated on uh, continuous, on contiguous uh, buffers, we can uh, simply have a serialized uh, version, representation of the index where we just store there the ID of the buffer and the offset to the key and the value, right? So this is not only have a even leaner memory uh, footprint, but in addition, it's, it's readily amenable for uh, off-heap uh, allocation. So this is a very important feature in the managed language systems uh, uh, in order to better utilize the, the memory, but I believe that it can also help for systems that manage their own uh, memory. So now we're back with the new pipeline. We have a new problem, right? Because we said that the read operation need, have to access all live, all live components. So now they need to read uh, much more segments and that we already know is not a good idea. So we need to find a way uh, to reduce the number of segments. And we actually can think about it as an opportunity rather uh, as a downside. So what we can do is to reapply the uh, compaction, but this time in memory. So we have uh, uh, three different uh, types of, uh, uh, three different policies for uh, compaction. Uh, the first one, the basic, just takes uh, several segments and merge sort their indices, right? So now instead of the uh, put op read operation need to access several segments, it can only search in a single uh, segment with larger uh, index. The second uh, uh, compaction policy is, uh, is eager in the sense that it always not only merges the indices, but also always uh, uh, eliminates, duplicates uh, from the data. So note that this can be a bit wasteful if you don't have any redundancies, right? So this, why we ha this is the reason for uh, the third uh, uh, policy, which is the adaptive, which al always does the basic uh, merging and flattening of the, uh, um, of, the, of the indices of all the segments, but only occasionally eliminates uh, duplicates. The way we do it is by uh, counting the number of unique items that we have in the pipeline. 
and uh, also and comparing or, or getting the ratio with respect to the total number of items that uh, we have in the pipeline. And we have a throttling parameter that uh, controls the, the exact ratio at which we want to uh, apply the, uh, the compaction of the data. Okay, so we note that uh, uh, now that this compaction not only allows us to have a uh, more uh, linear memory footprint, but it also allows us to have less uh, flashes of data from memory to disk, which uh, in turn reduces the number of uh, on-disk uh, compaction and reduces the write amplification. So as I, as I mentioned, the, the tackling the, first challenge, the third challenge allows us also to reduce the effect of the first and the second uh, challenge. Now, also consider a use case, an extreme use case, where you have the entire working set that can't fit into memory. So think what would happen in a regular LSM uh, technology. You would keep updating the, the items in the working set, and they will be continuously be flushed to disk, and the compaction would happen on disk. Now with the new approach, you can continuously do the compaction in memory, right? So the right amplification, is always one, and you, you, never, you never actually do run any on-disk compaction, and you can free uh, the resources for maybe uh, other, uh, other things that are running on the machine. But this is an extreme case. Uh, so I hope that at this point, uh, you all understand why we uh, chose to call this project Accordion, right? Because we have uh, items uh, added to the memory and therefore the memory grows and then we apply the compaction and it shrinks and then it grows again and shrinks again like an accordion. Okay, so finally let me present with some uh, uh, benchmark uh, results. First we ran a write-only uh, write experiment that uh, wrote uh, 50 uh, gigabyte of data and uh, uh, each, each uh, item had uh, values that had four, four fields, each field uh, of uh, 25 uh, bytes, and we ran it both on HDD and SSD. And the figures uh, uh, here present the speed up that we see for both uh, basic uh, policy and adaptive uh, policy with different uh, throttling parameters. Uh, 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 with respect to no compaction at all. So what you can see is, uh, and by the way, note that the smaller the, the throttling parameter is, the more aggressive the, the, the compaction is, right? Because you, you compact in when the ratio is uh, smaller. So we, we, we get uh, an increase of uh, throughput of 25% uh, on HDD and almost 50% on uh, SSD. Now also note that the uh, adaptive, uh, uh, adaptive policy with throttling parameter uh, 0 0.4, 0 0.5 is marginally uh, slower than uh, the uh, uh, basic uh, uh, policy. And the reason is first obviously because it does more work, right? It does uh, the, the, the compaction, the elimination of the duplication, but also we believe that uh, it is due to the fact that we counted the number of uniques in a fairly uh, naive way, and we believe that uh, there, are bet there are ways to improve it, uh, for example, by uh, using sketches. Okay, the next uh, figure uh, shows the right volume. Uh, improvement, and here you see uh, the, the, the opposite, the reverse picture, right? Uh, because, uh, uh, for, for example, for uh, adaptive policy with throttling parameter uh, 0 0.2, uh, we get a reduction of the number of flushes to uh, the disk and the number of uh, compaction on disk of 60, 60 percent and uh, the overall uh, uh, reduction in write volume is uh, of uh, up until uh, uh, 30%, both in HDD and in SSD. Uh, we also measured uh, mixed read-write uh, workload, and we measured, here we measured the, uh, the read latency percentiles. So for SSD, uh, you see a small degradation 
in the performance, and this is probably due to the fact that you need to access more segments than in the uh, uh, regular uh, basic uh, uh, or the regular uh, LSM. But in HDD, uh, we see a different picture, and when you think of it, uh, the high percentile, the high latency percentile uh, of read operation actually represent cache misses that need to be served from disk, right? So in HDD, this means that you pay a higher price. And so when you do the compaction in memory, you're able to store more items for longer time in memory and serve them for memory. So uh, uh, you, can, you can see the benefit uh, here. Okay, so to summarize, uh, uh, we presented the accordion, which is a leaner and faster write path, which uh, reapplies LSM design in memory. It, has, it introduces a flat memory uh, layout, which achieves uh, less GC and uh, is cache friendly and off heap friendly. And due to uh, its uh, 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 reduction in, uh, in memory footprint, it also has less frequent uh, flushes uh, on disk, and as a result, it increases the write throughput, reduces the write amplification, and the disk wear. And it is uh, generally available in HBase, uh, since HBase uh, 2.0. To uh, conclude, I want to uh, mention some uh, lessons learned from uh, working uh, with the open source uh, community. So I know, I'm not sure uh, how many uh, in the audience from Facebook are working with open source community that is open source that you don't own. And uh, so I think that uh, uh, the number one lesson that if, if anyone w will, uh, plan to uh, work in the future with uh, open source. So I think that uh, the first lesson that you need to remember is that you're not the first one. That is, there are protocol and procedure that you need to follow and some coding convention and style. And even if that's not how you usually work, you need to follow them. You're also not alone. That means that other people are trying in parallel to you, make changes, commit them, and this sometimes means that you need to rebase, sometimes over and over again, before you can commit uh, the changes uh, you're you are doing. Number two is that community uh, equals uh, agreement. Unlike the way that you may, uh, uh, are your regular to work today, that is, you have a, a, a good idea, you think it's a good idea, you go, you implement it, and maybe you need to uh, convince your manager or the product manager that it's a good idea and it should be used. Here you have to have the support of, of the community in order to get your ideas through. And this, and by this I mean it's not, the community is not people you work on a day-to-day -day basis. You don't meet with them face-to-face, -face, not even on Hangouts. So you need to convince them just by typing your thoughts in a JIRA or in a code review. And you have to be patient and also flexible and be ready to accept criticism and maybe change the way you think things or, 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 or try to do them. And last but not least is uh, the third is to know the evaluation process and the framework in which uh, it is evaluated. Once, it's important to understand that even if you have committed your code to the, uh, to the repository, this doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to be released. The, the person that controls the release is the release manager, and the way he picks the, the code that is in the release depends on the way that he evaluates the, the code. And this is not always things that you can find in like the regression uh, test folder, for example. So you need to ask about it. And you cannot even uh, assume that they're going to use uh, uh, some uh, framework. So I can give an example. During our uh, experiment, we assumed that they're going to adapt uh, the G1 GC, um, uh, GC because it's like the state of the art. 
And then it turns out that G1 doesn't work so well with the way that HBase allocates its buffer and that they're not planning to adopt it. And that meant that we had to go back and do all our evaluation again and again come back to the community and convince them again with new results. So now the evaluation process in advance, it can save you a lot of time. Um, and uh, that's it. Uh, thank you for listening, and uh, if there are any questions now, I'm willing to take them.